going to um, start the meeting of the uh, applications review committee. And as we usually do, uh, we're going to have a bunch of the flat. So, uh, Please to the flag of the United States of America, which is the public, for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty, justice for all. Okay, um, we are going to have a formal roll call again tonight. Uh, Carl Bonamico. Here. Mike Podensky is here. That's me, Craig Fishbein. Here. Rob Fritz. Here. My remote. Rob Fritz is My here. remote. Uh, Mike Lidden. Here. Bob Rose. Here. Jacqueline McNamee. Here. Chris Regan. Here. Jesse Reynolds. Here. Amy Walsh. Here. All present and accounted for. Um, any refusals tonight on those applicants that are on the agenda? Jesse, what do you got? I will be refusing myself from the Lyman Hall band application. Okay. Got it. So, um, and they're here, by the way. What's that? Lyman Hall band is here tonight. If you Lyman Hall band is Thank you. Okay. So, in that case, um, just a quick thing on the agenda. Number two is a Wallingford Church of the Nazarene food pantry. Um, I should, if I knew then what I know now, I, I wouldn't have put it on the agenda. I would have matched that with the Church of the Nazarene um, because uh, I, with, uh, with United Way, I would match this with the uh, United Way application because this applicant, the way it's drafted, is not a legal entity. It's sort of a adjunct or a program of United Way. So those two really should be matched. And what I propose therefore is to sort of take this off the agenda. It's not a recommendation or a denial or anything like that. We're just gonna move it to another night when United Way is here and fold, fold that into the greater um, United Way application. Does anyone have any objection to that, to that process? Okay, so we'll take the uh, Church of the Nazarene off the general agenda. That will reappear uh, at, uh, at a later time. Uh, because Lyman Hall music parents are in the audience, and representatives, I think we'll do that now and then go to capital B on, uh, on the agenda and then do it thereafter with the applications. So let me just get that application in front of me. And we will. So this is the first night that we have uh, we have nonprofits on the agenda and just a quick refresher course on, on this. Um, there's two ways that nonprofits can get, can get ARPA grant money. One is if they have a programming and their programming is directed uh, at uh, beneficiaries who uh, need ARPA programming that um, have been impacted uh, by the COVID pandemic uh, and or either through health, adverse health, or economically. And the second way nonprofits can get money if they themselves have a hardship and they need ARPA funds for them to um, mitigate the financial hardship caused by the pandemic that they're um, suffering now. So those are the two ways of doing it. Um, we voted the other night that score that a nonprofit with a programming application uh, has to get is 75. So I'm just going to repeat that. If a nonprofit has an application for programming, it has to get an average score 
of 75, a score of 74 or less means we do not recommend that award. And the way we handle these is uh, we go around the table once or twice, we have a discussion on the merits of the application. And then we each have um, score sheets. Uh, we fill in the score sheets, we hand them in uh, tonight. Uh, uh, Amy was uh, working with the adding machine. I distracted you, I'm not sure you knew that. And we'll take an average score. And if the average score is 75 or stronger, that's a uh, recommended application. So let's, uh, let's begin with that. Can I ask a question along those lines? You know, it's understandable with the business applications we're dealing with $25,000 or zero, right? That's the effect of the score. Here, because the nonprofits, and arguably the nonprofits have a million dollars and have 30 different components to that. How are we dealing with the, I mean, are we saying 75 and above, it's 100% of what they asked for, or are we handling that different? So, yeah, as discussed the other night, if there seems to be a reason to reduce an application in the amount, we can do that. It's up to the committee to determine the amount of the award, uh, as well as who the uh, recipient of the award will be. And when we get to that, there needs to be a suggestion made and then a motion carried to reduce a particular award by a certain amount. If that passes, then the uh, then the amended request, I'll phrase it that way, but then amended request is a lower amount and then it goes through our usual scoring process. So just to, so yeah. um, below 75 is essentially nothing. Uh, right. 75 is a gatekeeper function for something. Is that fair to say? Above 75 is an award in full. I'm not sure I understood your question. That would mean we approve the recommendation in full. Okay. As it's so, subject to the, you know, so the, wait, wait. Last night we agreed that going into the record would be the, uh, the score and the dollar amount of yeah. the grant. At that point in time, we would do the same unless there's an objection or a conversation regarding a lower amount. Um, right? Yeah, so you may remember last night. Uh, there was an application. And we, when, we, when we established the, 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 the pass, it was pass fail as the person who made the motion. It was pass fail at 75. We never talked about going, going uh, a kind of prorated uh, amount because I know that Bob was, Bob Gross was, a, was an advocate for that. And as a, as a board, we voted for all or nothing. Okay. I get the feeling we're recreating the wheel here. <laughs> so, so, we, so let, yeah. Let just, remember last night, there's an application in front of us. I took the first wing in it, and as you remember, I said, uh, if anyone is tempted by a reduced amount, I think it went from 25000 to 8000 say so, when I was uh, uh, testing the waters to see if there was any appetite to reduce the award. There was no such appetite, and so the award went forward on the 25, up or 25000 up or down. A couple of nights ago, we had this exact same discussion, and uh, what we decided was an award can be reduced, but the, uh, we can pair out items that are excessive or not related or not caused by COVID, so on and so forth. That would have to be by a, a vote and that reduced amount that is subject to our scoring. Uh, if an application is um, presented and there's items in there that are not called out pursuant to a vote, you have to reflect that in your scoring and give them a lower score if that's what you choose to do. I hope I answered your question. Well, um, sort of, let me just not to belabor, just to look at it. So yeah. is a motion of, pro let's just say something gets an eight. Is it appropriate to, and the, and the, the ask is $100,000. Is it appropriate to make a motion at that time to uh, reduce the amount? No, that time is coming on. Okay. What's your question? Yeah, reduce. So I think okay. what we're supposed to do is just we have five items we're asking for, and one of them is they want to put a new pool in their backyard. We said, no, 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 that's not. It's twenty thousand dollars. We at that point we knock that twenty thousand dollars out. Eighty thousand is still good. We vote on the eighty thousand. Is that the number? If we get seven people to vote for that, 
that's what we're going to be grading it on. Yes, seven I, thought, I thought that was clear. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. I'm still confused. Let's, 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 All right. let's, let's back up. Let's back up. You have an application with 10 items on it, each has a price. Okay, we're going to start with that example. One of those items is, is too weak. Either you don't feel it's related to COVID, you don't think it's for any reason you decide. One item is too weak. And the other nine items are very strong. How do you deal with that weak item? You make your pitch that item, that item is weak, and you make the suggestion you'd like to call that out. So then you make a motion to call out item 10, reduce the uh, request by the amount assigned to that item. Uh, we take a vote on reducing that total grant award by the that one item that you don't like, that the, the number assigned to that. And it, I forgot the example I started with, but it's a 100,000 application uh, originally, and the item you don't like is 10,000. The committee agrees There's to take out open an up. item, pull the phone, pull the phone. We're down to a ninety thousand dollar application. I understand. That ninety thousand dollar application then needs seven votes to carry over. If you only have two people objection, objecting that yeah. those two items yeah. that are inferior to the application, should you reflect that in the in a lower, much lower score? But the answer is no. I mean, we can, yeah. but we decided this like two nights ago. Uh, the answer is no. Those two items stay in the application. If you think the application is weakened, you, you made your effort to carry it back. It's your choice. And you were not successful. It's a lower score if you so choose. My name's Sean. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the next win in our decision process is the opportunity to reduce the application. Anytime you go around the table. When we go around the table. So again, I, I, I tried to. But I didn't like Point two, I would like to say it's a ninety thousand yeah. dollar thing, and and so then okay, so I'll be around here. I say it's not a hundred thousand; it's ninety thousand. And when do other people say yes, I like that idea, or no, I don't? Like we'll 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 sort that out. Um, I I tried to lay the, again the model for it last night as an example when I said, how do you feel about reducing that was bad, to eight? Yes, I think we didn't. I understand the model, but yeah. isn't there a level of redundancy here? Because when you vote. And you strongly feel that that item should be deducted, and someone else doesn't feel that way. You reflect that in your outcome of your vote. Yeah. What, what the only thing is, I think that if we see something that's really egregious, and let's just say find the ball, and say no, that, I'm just to make it a because it's not. They, they have a subwoofer, and we say that has nothing to do with the band. It has nothing to do with what they're doing, and all of us agree that it shouldn't be in there. So we vote to take it out. It makes it a stronger application because one of the items that's taken out shouldn't have been in there to begin with. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. It, but if you if we leave it in there, then some people who feel it should be out of there might grade their score lower because they felt that isn't a great application. But I would, I would measure and grade that score on the aggregate. Mm -hmm. All right. Prior to score. So yeah, go ahead, Chris. Just prior to score. Prior to that exercise, you understand that you're voting on a reduced amount. Sure, that has to be passed by a vote. Okay. Right. Yeah, that has to be yeah, to a subordinate preliminary vote to the final. So again, I'm just going to beat the nail in one more time. If last night, for the example, there was interest in reducing the award to eight, I would have then said, I entertain a motion to reduce the award from 25 to eight. I've been seconded. We would go around the table and vote if that motion carried. The application now becomes eight, and we would score it based on the eight. But if that failed and the twenty-five remained, the, the you know the award amount, score it the way you want. All right. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Lyman Hall Music. This is a uh, procedure a little more complicated, but we can resolve the complication. Okay. Uh, and here's what I mean. This application used both pathways that I described earlier to get to a $25,000 award. It used both the hardship pathway 
which is like part A of the application. And it used the programming pathway to get to the same pot of money. Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. You can rely on one pathway or both. It, 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 it doesn't matter. The complication in this case is we do not yet have scoring criteria for hardship applications as they apply to nonprofits. Therefore, how do we handle that? And in looking over the, uh, the documentation today, um, I think the solution is that Actually, the solution for me was that let me pretend, Mike, that the hardship portion was not here because we don't have criteria to score hardship. And let's suppose we scored it only on the programming pathway. Could this application be approved or recommended, I should say, solely on the programming side? So I went through um, the scoring exercise. And I'm going, to, I'm going to share with you, you know, pretty much right now what I came up with. And I decided, well, this procedural application doesn't matter because they, for me, we get a passing grade just on the programming, uh, the programming part of the application. I don't even need to look at the hardship set. Okay. So I'm going to go through the usual presentation that I usually do. It'll only take a couple minutes. And then when we go around the table, if you could signal to me uh, whether or not uh, you're leaning to approve the you know, score of 75 or more based solely on the programming part. If the answer is no, then we have a little procedure for which everything is solvable, uh, but there's a way of handling that. But that's how I think I want to do it. Did I confuse anybody with what I just said? Sure. Okay. All right. So here's what I see in the uh, Line Home Music Parents Association uh, application. Um, they, reading a little bit from their application, uh, it says, oh, nonprofit advisor of parents, family, alumni, and support of the Lyman Hall Music Department, and their mission is to uh, provide support to the school music program, uh, bands, Whatever, what all that involves, it's all spelled out very nicely actually in the application. Um, it says the students served by the programs which the uh, organization supports are among the most diverse of all youth activities in Longford. More detail there is provided. I'm not going to read. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, what they're looking for is uh, equipment for the band and some uh, technicians to help implement the, uh, the programming that they are planning. Um, as I remember the application, some of the, some of the musical instruments are getting old, they're wearing out, they need to be replaced. And uh, I think the, it's logical to assume that the better instruments you have, the better music you make, the better music you make, better it is for everybody, you attract more students, you get the students to a higher school level, so on and so forth. Um, as, I, as I look through this, um, there are financials attached, but because it's not a hardship application, um, I didn't spend too much time on the financials because it's not a hardship application. They don't have to prove a hardship you know, to the organization. They may have had one, but they don't need to establish that. Um, they survived through fundraising events, so on and so forth. So now the question becomes, what about the criteria? And the first row is, um, will the proposed project address the negative economic and or health impacts due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Now, it's pretty difficult, I think, to make a link between kids participating in the band and an economic impact. However, that's not where I'm going on. You could have a different opinion. I'm going on the health impact in that um, 
as a, as a, as a population, um, school kids were negatively impacted. I, um, I don't need to be, be persuaded about that. And extracurricular activities and, and music, in, in my view, helps kids become more emotionally resilient, more mature, more disciplined, uh, happier, therefore healthier. The COVID you know, resulted in remote learning and school shutting down and matching, you know, all, all these things that we've all read about. Um, music and extracurricular activities helps bring the spirit up. Um, music is great and I think it's a good way to address the health impacts. Um, so I'm not worrying about is each student in the band program um, you know, middle income or above, maybe they don't need you know, financial aid or any of the basic services. Um, but again, for me, this is a health matter. Uh, and so here's how I stored that. Um, usually I don't give specific stores, but because we have this procedural little anomaly, I, I wanted to do that. I'm gonna start from the bottom. Um, and it says, is the program ready to implement it? And if not, um, is the timeline reasonable? The maximum there is 25 points. Uh, I didn't see anything in the program that was beyond their control that was so complicated that would result in an unforeseen delay. I, I didn't see that, so I saw no reason to mark down 25 to a lower number. So on the bottom row, um, my tentative score is such a good everyone slots. I, I put 25 out of 25. Um, the next row up has several concepts. I just want to go through those. Is the proposed budget appropriate for the request? Uh, it seemed to me it absolutely was. I mean, they laid it out in, in pretty good detail, more detail than we typically see. Supported by documentation, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna circle back to that. Is any additional funding needed? No, a high percentage of the requested funds are being used for direct costs. It seems like just about all of them are, so I, no problem there. Uh, and um, the program costs compared to the number of people served a lot of people being served here and I hope to grow it. So uh, I think I saw no reason to mark them down because of the number of people that served. With respect to the documentation, um, there were was no there were no attachments from catalogs or price lists or anything else. Um, however, the items they're looking for were often identified by model or, or you know, a very specific identification. So this wasn't made up out of whole cloth. This wasn't the figment of someone's imagination. Uh, someone researched these prices and put them on the list. So somewhere there was some documentation, although not attached. Um, I spot checked a couple of them to see if it made sense. And one was a MacBook Air, which I just bought. This is new just for this committee. And their prices, they got us, they're looking for better price than I paid. Not by much, but, uh, and then a couple of other things. I just wanted to see if it was realistic. And a lot of prices were realistic, but they didn't attach documentation. So I nicked them by three points. Um, good deal, I mean, that's a, that's a high percentage. And then the other question is, um, is this program COVID related or does it have really nothing to do with COVID and so on and so forth? If I reduce that top line from 50 to as low as 33, I, do, I still come up with 80, which is above the 75. So my tentative score is subject to your thoughts, but I may increase, I don't see that decrease, but I, I, mean, I, got, I got an 80 and that's how I got there. Um, so I'm at my uh, word limit. Who wants to take the first one? The first one. Um, taking a look at every student K through 12 was impacted with, with COVID. Student populations um, it was impacted, and services such as these in the high school both as part of the core curriculum, uh, uh, extra curriculum, and everything else being used. Absolutely, you know, for me, uh, for the first part, it was a you know it's a um, and looking at the budget, taking a look at Amazon education with a little bit more of a discount than. Um, than consumers. So, I mean, the pricing is spot on. Um, if you, and, and I 
Uh, well, I was going to give a, a wise comment and say, growing up on the West Side, it's tough to say this, but uh, <laughs> sorry, with my Sheehan background. Um, but it, I thought it was a good application. Um, I actually, the reason why I asked you yesterday about the scoring sheets was this application um, to see which one to use. I, I think it's a fine application. I'm passing it. Um, I think it's it's all of us around the table will say there's a it's a documented need. It fits the the, the parameters. So um, I, and I think it was uh, pretty well documented. As Chris noted, you know, I checked your numbers too, and I guess the the Wikipedia version of Amazon now it's the way to go if you question if someone's going to buy something. Um, it was pretty dead on. So uh, I appreciate it, and I'll pass. Do you want me to go to Rob Fritz while I'm here? Since yeah, let's do that. Turn him so that you can hear him. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with all the comments already previously stated, so I would pass this for sure. Rob, do you want to go over your, do you want to say your scores right now? Or you want to wait? Sure. No, I'll, I'll, it's pretty simple. I'm, I'm not quite as, uh, I mean, you brought out very, a lot of details. I would say, uh, is the clear, is the purpose clearly described? I say yes. I gave that 50 points. Is the proposed budget appropriate? I said yes. That's 25. And is the program ready to be implemented? I gave that a 25 as well because it is. So it was pretty, pretty uh, um, obvious to me. It's a good application and a good need. I think this is a spot on application. This type of application we'd like to see more of. I mean, this is a community uh, wide program that helps to Mr. Glidden's point, the east side of Wallingford, but it's, <laughs> it's a it's a community wide program. I don't I, I have an issue with the backing material, but we're going to talk about that later because I think that that should not be a, a ding to 100% or any percent because we don't know what they were told to provide. Right. Let's hold off that. I'm just saying that I just want it to be known that that's, and I don't think we should look at their, and this will come up and on the this finances was mentioned. I don't care if they have a million dollars in the bank. This is a program that might be outside of what their normal expenses are. And if that's the case, then we should fund the program that comes to us from not-for-profits if it's outside the scope of their normal activity. If it's something that they did just all the time that's been fundraised, then we should do it. So I, I give it a high score. Okay, great. Um, you know, I, I agree with just about everything I've heard. Um, you know, this not only helps the current students, but it helps the program going forward. And I've always been supportive of school design, school design, like this learning. If somebody asks about school learning, we need to go to school. Uh, they're, they're helpful. Um, you know, it's, it's always good to be able to help one of our, one of the best high schools in town. <laughs> East West guy. Shameless. Shameless. <laughs> um, shameless. You see the Sheen alumni I, sitting at the table now. I will, <laughs> I will flag uh, an issue that sort of dovetails into what uh, Mr. Gross was you know, talking about is review of what we have before us. Because I do note that the application is electronically ostensibly signed by uh, Bill McGovern and John Bow. Um, but when I look up in Concord, which I think we've set the precedent by reviewing Concord for some sort of 
provenance, it indicates that totally different individuals are the principals of this entity. So Steve Kowalski is the president, Akina Walker is the vice president, Lisa Benkowski is the treasurer. So, and Denise Chandler is the secretary. None of which is named appear on this document. So I don't know if that's an internal filing issue. Uh, I would hope that it was submitted on behalf of those that were are legally authorized to submit it, but I have no, other than what I see here, I have no way to question that. So I, I did score it the highest I've scored any application this far. Craig is going to point that out. Carl? <laughs> I see. It's actually a very valid point supporting the contract. Uh, and the point is just that we make sure that those principles are accounted for that are in the final of the state and are consistent with those principles. So that's, I agree with Craig on that. Uh, great. Uh, my concern, the health impact is absolutely, especially when it comes to the K through 12, a lot of specificity here, well documented, um, you know, the thoroughness. And I, I also like the pricing, which is very accurate. I give it a strong score. I also agree with everything that everyone has said, and I also agree that it is a very valid document. I think it's very important and I have champions all the time. Uh, any need to add further comments as we go around the table saying, okay, time to fill in the score sheets on the hand, hand them up. So um, just a, a comment, I think procedurally what we'll do, and maybe I learned my lesson last night, is after the scores come in, we'll entertain a motion. If it's approved, if it's, if it's recommended, entertain the motion to recommend the application. We'll name the applicant in a certain dollar amount and they'll tidy up. You on board with that, Mike? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that at me? So you're, you're, you're the motion I'm the motion maker. Yeah, you're the motion maker. Craig will correct Anyone me. Anyone else want to do it? <laughs> Looking at you. All right, so I'm going to take a stab at it. Craig, correct me. Motion to authorize the chairman to report to send a positive report to government concerning application of Lyman Hall Music Parents Association, the grant amount of full $25,000. Second by Mr. Gross. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We have one recusal. That's Jesse Reynolds. Any abstain? So that's unanimous. Got it? Okay. <laughs> Clearly, if there's any misdemeanor that the consultant brings on this bus, we will provide everything necessary. Um, I, I think the, there were web links in the original application that maybe didn't make it through to you guys, but they were paid through the original form for, for the Thank you, sir, for coming. Appreciate it. Thanks. Um, we'll move on to the public library, which is first on the agenda.
Again, this is a programming grant. It's not a hardship grant. It's a programming grant. Um, they did file their, uh, their financials. Uh, there's no names there. Um, there's also an auditor's statement of the Commission of Finances from the, the public accounting firm Bailey and Serrano. This is a grant to try to make Wallingford residents more computer literate. I'll explain it a little bit in the reading excerpts from the application. We're looking for $99,786 to accomplish their goal. They have said in their application that this is to develop a digital navigator program. Digital navigator programs are around. If you, if you Google digital navigator programs, you'll see what it's all about. And it, it's, uh, generally speaking, it's people in, in local institutions that help residents become familiar with the internet and provide internet access and maybe even computer. This program is around, around the country. I think there's maybe five or six or seven in Connecticut already. Um, but I'm going to go back to the application of this read excerpts. Um, they say they want to develop a digital navigator program to respond to the COVID 19 pandemic that has created an urgent public need for inclusion programs, digital inclusion programs to get connected with affordable home internet, find affordable computing services and learn basic digital skills. Uh, digital navigators are individuals who address the whole digital inclusion process, home connectivity, access to devices, digital skills. And they say that the model, um, they, they want to help bring devices make them accessible to people that don't have them, digital devices, laptops, phones, things like that. Um, a competent, I'm reading here, a competent digital navigator assesses the needs of the individuals and guides them towards suitable resources, so on and so forth. Uh, in this proposed program, trained digital navigators employed by the Wallingford Public Library will assess a community member's needs, help them as needed, often on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and to um, improve, their, improve their skills. I think I've got one more thing to read, and then I want to just editorialize what they need to do. Um, we say that assuming a two hour duration for each client's appointment, the program will offer approximately 600 appointments. If the average client meets with their assigned digital navigator three times, this program will reach 200 low income and or older Wallingford residents to meet their connectivity and digital adoption needs over the 12 month schedule described in the timeline. I think I'm gonna stop reading. Um, the application is thorough, uh, detailed. I never heard of digital navigators before I read this. It's, it's a very, very informative. Um, so further details, see the application. But how about how about the scoring? Uh, I'll tell you how I scored it. Uh, the, the question, the question for me initially was, is sufficiently connected to the pandemic to get you know super high maximum grade, or is this a program that we would want anyway and would happen even without the uh, pandemic? But I came down uh, giving the library on that first row, uh, the 50 point row, the purpose, the program detail, the goals, expected outcome, uh, where they uh, did they poorly um, 
demonstrate a need of those in Wallingford you know, who are impacted by the pandemic. And people in a challenged socioeconomic bracket, I presume, you know, at least in my mind, to have been impacted in a greater way by the pandemic or disadvantaged in so many ways, particularly if they don't have computer skills, even not going as far as saying, you know, if your employer says work from home and you don't have basic computer skills, you become unemployable. If you're looking for a job and it says you don't have to have basic computer skills, you're not employable. If on your job you need to deal with the internet, do Google searches, check websites. If you don't have the computer skills uh, to do that, obviously you're negatively impacted. So, you know, although there is a, um, uh, uh, I, I suppose a possibility that this is not sufficiently COVID connected. I gave it 49 out of 50 points because of that little doubt I had. I mean, I just said 49 out of 50 on that first row. Um, going down to the second row, uh, it says, is the proposed budget uh, you know, appropriate and supported by documentation? Uh, is any additional funding needed? Are a high percentage of the funds going to be used for direct costs? And uh, the program cost compared to the number of people it served is that appropriate? Uh, I saw, you know, everything that I I needed to see. Maybe there was some documentation that could have been added, um, but in general, it was pretty good because of the documentation. Maybe that could have been supported. I nicked them by two points, so I gave twenty three out of twenty five. And is the program ready? It certainly seems to be, and uh, I ended up with ninety eight out of a possible 100. What's needed again is a 75 minimum to pass uh, and to, to, go, to get recommended by this committee. Who wants to take the first swing, Jesse? Um, <clears throat> I, uh, hold on, hold on, Jesse. Sure. Hold on one second. It's not true. What I said was not true because I read from the wrong score sheet. <laughs> so let me correct myself. Hold on. Yeah, hold on one second. I gave him 30 out of 50 on that first row because of that doubt about is it sufficiently COVID connected. I ended up with an 88. So I gave him 38 on the first row because of the is it COVID connected or is it something we want to do anyway? 25 out of 25 for the second row and 25 out of 25 for this is good. How embarrassing that is. So I gave him 88 out of uh, 375. Go. Um, I, I just, uh... I wanted to go first because I haven't gone first yet, but um, I also wanted to go first because I thought the application um, touched on everything that you know it needed to touch upon. It, it demonstrated the where the money would uh, go and how they would also supplement the money with library resources that were already in place. I thought the demographics that they provided on Wallingford compared to Connecticut were super helpful. Um, you know, we, there, there are certain things that, you know, we're, we're sort of approaching the state percentage in terms of Spanish being spoken in the home. There's, there's, there's a lot of uh, information out there about the digital divide and how it uh, deals with and how it uh, is disproportionately uh, spread across the population. We have an older population than the state average. So uh, a lot of the folks that were deeply affected by COVID in terms of the inability to connect um, maybe not even having the ability to even know how to get onto the internet from within their home if, if there's a need there. Um, I think our library has historically always provided services to the most in need, and they already had established in the application that they had already been doing things throughout COVID in terms of boosting Wi-Fi within the building itself, um, getting, uh, you know, things donated from Choate and other places so that SCOW and other groups could disperse, uh, you know, use laptops and so forth. So, I mean, I had zero problems with the application entirely. Um, and, uh, and I'm reading from the correct scoring sheet. So, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I, I that's, that's really, I, you know, I, I think this is a really, um, it's a really strong application. Amy? Um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that um, Wallingford Library would identify programs that are needed when they say DNA is not zero because they consistently are, you know, leading us in new ways. Um, I was impressed with this application and I appreciated their, their data on um, the state as a whole and the Wallingford specific and how thoughtful they can with the um, United Way to, to help identify some of that information. Um, 
addressing the digital divide is, is key. I think it's something that the COVID epidemic did highlight where those gaps are. I would note that everybody around this table in order to participate in this, this committee has needed a digital connection. So the people who aren't at this table are people who have not had digital connections. You know, maybe even our computers were home printing out our, our flow sheets. So um, I think uh, closing that gap is a, is a very needed um, thing in our community and hats off to a lot of the that are addressing it as far as specific scoring, you know, like we but well, yeah, this again, this is the kind of application. They and a couple things. To, they did this program already two years ago. This is something the government wanted done. The federal government wanted the outreach to the tribal nation and to the communities that are underserved throughout the country. The way they reached out to these communities was primarily through libraries throughout the country. Um, Kansas has a program in place, East Hartford, Stanford. So, because they're a community in town that wants to give you a small grant for it. Um, this is all tied into the affordable connectivity program. This is all part of that same program. I hope that the library takes advantage of that because they mentioned in here uh, the cost of internet. But for the demographics they're targeting, they shouldn't be paying for it. So hopefully they'll be able to fund their program further along. So I, I just think this is uh, this program falls under the CARES Act. So I mean, it, it falls under ARPA. This is just a perfect application. Great. You know, I wear a lot of hats. Um, and when uh, this whole thing started, the pandemic, I got a call from a woman who uh, was seeing She was scared. She couldn't go to the store. She wanted food. You can order food over the internet. I don't know how to do that. Wrongly, um, it's a perfect effort. Okay. Uh, spell application addresses both the health, in my view, um, it's not only about lack of computer skills, but it's also lack of wisdom and price of life buying across the board equipment that we, many of us, Granted today, um, just just a just a picture of Stella. Captain, it's a perfect application, and like everyone said, technology today is a much better necessity. Um, we can have a group in our library, and I have the same experience as the COVID season. I know people how to use computers and moms teaching their kids how to use computers. So absolutely, one hundred. Started, Jesse started, right? Um, <clears throat> echo everyone's sentiments. Uh, yeah, so it's been a great application. Uh, a couple of minor issues, but nothing that uh, that would uh, necessitate a major uh, a change in conversation for me. So. Same. Nothing, nothing further to add. Rob, do you have floor is yours? <laughs> Thank you. No, just uh, I ditto everybody. It's a very worthy cause address, uh, targeting a demographic group that was certainly impacted negatively by COVID. Very, very well prepared application. So I'm in full favor as, as most everyone else is as well. Rob, do you want to go over your scores quick? So I, um, I gave it, uh, yeah, uh, 50, 25, 25 for a score of 100. Thanks. I'm back. <laughs> Matt, 100. Guadalico, 95. Korinsky, 85. Regan, 85. Fritz, 100. Glidden, 90. Reynolds, 100. Walsh, 100. Fishbine, 100. Gross, 95. 95. I'm ready for 
Uh, motion authorize the chair to send a positive report to government concerning the awarding a grant to the Wallingford Public Library Association in the amount of $99,000, $99,786, sorry. interested and you want to generate a list if you go to the, the website where all of these things are you can actually download an actual list in excel of all of the uh, applications that have been submitted so far and so just in excel what i did was i used a, a formula to generate random numbers alongside of all of the applicants um, and then had to do a couple of additional steps but basically what i did was once those numbers were generated randomly I then took and sorted it by those numbers and set by the random numbers and put them in an order from lowest to highest. And so each one of the application, each each group, the nonprofits and the businesses were just randomly ordered just using a, a random number generator. Um, I did remove the ones that were already scored, so they're placed above. And so that's basically what it what it what it entails. So Consistent with our prior conversations, uh, the idea would be that when the lists are final, not final, uh, but I'm expecting to be by the end of the week. Nonprofits are probably all in, but business applications are not. So when we get the word that all the business applications have been uploaded, uh, I'll throw this back into Jesse's lap and he'll do another scramble, keeping nonprofits separate from the business applications. Um, he'll forward that scramble uh, list to me, I'll send it out to everybody, and that would be the list uh, from which I'll pick the agenda, just going right, right down the list. And um, probably in, in some cases, I'll divide the night into business and nonprofits. Maybe in other cases, it'll be all business, but it'll try to equal out. Uh, and so we would have going parallel tracks that are. You know, show some sort of an equity of making progress equally along the two categories. Um, I think that's all I can say on that. Oh, yes. So while I'm at it, I will probably put more on the agenda than we might be able to handle. I don't know how quick we'll go through these, but as long as no one, no applicant is sitting in the audience waiting for their application to be heard. Uh, if I put more on the agenda that we can handle when it's getting late into the night, say 9.15 or something, we can always move the items we didn't reach to the next night or to, yeah, I'm trying to do it to the next night. And um, also, you can only do that if it's a regularly scheduled meeting the next day. Otherwise, that's, that's if, it's if it's special meetings, so we, we may have to approve another that. another. Um, I got to work that. So um, there needs to be enough time, enough distance in between meetings, so that I can notify the applicants 
you know, when they're supposed to come and give us time to prepare, so on and so forth. There's some technical issues, but I'll work those out. But that's the theory as to how it could work. I don't want to overload the agenda so much that we have to do that all the time. That gets very complicated. Also, um, a couple of meetings ago, we introduced the concept that we could now begin the rotation of those who want to take the first swing and present the application, uh, and maybe um, two open ideas, but I was thinking two per individual, and it might be therefore four or five individuals presenting two applications on any one night. And I would just go in alphabetical order, uh, starting with Carl and so on, and I would put your initials on the agenda next to the application that that individual would present. There's two applications. It could be three, it could be one. Um, and if you don't want to participate or it looks like you've got a busy week or something, um, you, you got to let me know. I mean, let me, if, or if in general you just don't you know, really want to do that at all, let me know the next couple of days. Um, but if something is coming up in your schedule that it makes it impossible for you to do that, let me know and we'll just put another set of initials in your mind. But I, I'm going to go last in this rotation. So I'll be the tenth person to, to do it, but then you know I'll, I'll carry my share thereafter. Did I confuse anybody? Is there any thoughts or, 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 or refinements that anybody wants to offer for that? Okay. So we're now on uh, Columbus House. Columbus House runs the Wallingford Home Show. They're a big organization. They provided tax returns. They had the consolidated financial statements uh, issued by uh, the CPA firm. Not everybody knows, I, I don't think, about the homeless shelter. So I'm going to read a little, just a little bit from their application which is uh, much more detailed than what I'm going to read from. But Columbus House is seeking to make the buildings at 123 Quinnipiac Avenue safer for all clients. This is especially critical for the main shelter building, which is a congregate space for 16 individuals that is just over 2,000 square feet and has no partitions. What do they want to do? They want to put an air conditioning unit. So I'm going to circle to that in, in a minute. But the requirement. The acquisition and installation of, the, of these uh, Air conditioning units it's going to cost about uh, eighteen hundred and sixty-five dollars a unit, and you've got to add to that the cost of the electrician or to install it, and the grand total of the grant application for these air conditioning units and the installation is thirty-six thousand six hundred and eighty dollars. This again, this is not a hardship application. This is a programming uh, application. The application says that the proposal um, is to use ARPA money to purchase wall-mounted aura air purifier units. These have demonstrated the ability to significantly reduce concentrations of active SARS-CoV-2 uh, from the air in a controlled environment. Uh, they're proposing one unit for every 400 square feet. Based on their research, that's uh, an effective use of these air purifier units. Loosely, I call them air conditioners, and I know they are, but uh, it goes on to say that the Wallingford Emergency Shelter uh, is a program of Columbus House Inc., which is the applicant, and uh, they provide shelter and case management for families and individuals experiencing homelessness in the Wallingford area. In December 2021, two of the four units of the family shelter were converted to project-based housing inventory in Wallingford by uh, two desperately needed units. They go on to have more detail, um, but they want to provide a safe, healthy environment for their clients that need to stay in emergency shelter. Um, I don't think I have any additional elaboration. Um, a lot of detail is provided. 
And I'll stop. I'll stop there. Um, I gave them the connection. The connection to the pandemic is really pretty self-evident. Um, the application is you know, as detailed as you can get. It's ready to go. I, I, I ended up with 98 out of 100. Point 75 is minimum. Who wants to take the next swing and we'll go from there? Mm -hmm. Oh well. Um... We are very familiar with the Columbus House and they look like they do need a nice town and move in to the Haven area. I'd like to see you know, first I was questioning what they have enough. Um happy to think of all of the monies asked for is going to be used at the two um, areas across the street. Um what you know COVID is not gonna go away, so I think what they're asking for is necessary and what they would like for health and safety is like what we're looking for in our town. Um so I would them very Chris? Uh, we were hoping for exactly the size. They provide a needed uh, service to the community. They are not asking for an extraordinary amount of money for the two that they just passed the community. So, a strong pass. Same. Strong pass. Rob? Uh, yes, I, there, there aren't very many situations that uh, a person could find themselves in them being homeless. So, I I think the uh, Columbus House does tremendous work. It's terribly needed, and I fully 100% support the application. Do you want to go over your scores while I have you? Sure, 100, 50, 25, and 25. That works for me. Thanks, Rob. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, echo what's been said so far. I, I think it, you know, when I read that they were bringing people to hotels in Middletown during the pandemic, knowing the already compromised positions that people are in, thinking about having to go through that again. This is the kind of uh, use for the money that sort of addresses, you know, some of the questions that we have, like if this were ever to happen again, or if it gets worse, um, you know, what would we need to do? And so this, you know, is, this, this meets the needs that move forward. Um, I thought the application was really well done. There were some small things in there, so I didn't give it a perfect score, like, you know, but, um, and, and I did find some of the financials a little bit diff difficult to unfurl, given that it's a large organization with a subset that this is applied to. But other than that, I am, um, it's a, it's, they do great work. It's a great cause. And they're not asking for, you know, anything outside the realm of, um, you know, but, you know, it's reasonable. Amy? Yeah, likewise. Um, the, uh, the same thing that Jackie brought up, it's, it's a large organization, but I appreciate that their request is very long to face and definitely needed. And so, yes. Yeah, this is just the perfect type of thing that COVID unfortunately did that remedy their situation while they had a lot of problems during, uh, in all the communities they dealt with because of housing. So this will help them tremendously. Great. Yeah, I agree with the comments specifically that Jackie made. I was originally concerned, but I'm glad to see that you know, that was the wrong thing. So, great. Any additional comments? If not, we'll turn on our score sheet. Carl, I have a couple of things. Jeez. Just to speak twice as long. I know. I just a uh, essential organization. Sure, Carl. Yes. Bonamico, 95. Radinsky, 98. Fishbein, 100. Lidden, 99. Regan, 100. Fritz, 100. Reynolds, 96. One gross is 100. And 
wall for 100. Like when you're ready. Okay. Uh, motion to authorize the chairman to send a positive report to government concerning the awarding of a grant to Columbus House Incorporated in the amount of thirty-six thousand six hundred eighty dollars. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? That's unanimous. Right, let's take a number capital letter B on the agenda. So the agenda reads, um, discussion of possible action on a policy regarding incomplete applications. This was raised last night in the course of a discussion on an application. And last night we um, decided to, to um, consider an application on the merits be a hypothetical that we're talking about that did not have tax returns attached when tax returns could have been attached. The tax returns obviously had to have been filed. I'm talking now about business applications and we will move over if we want to to applications for nonprofits in a few minutes, but I want to right now limit this to uh, applications for businesses. Um, I thought the other night that um, by marking down a application that did not have tax returns accompanying it, uh, I thought that we could maybe go forward and the markdown would be would take care of the problem. But in retrospect, I think I was naive in that. And uh, I think we, we proceeded last night the only way we could, um, given the way the agenda was set and given the way or given the fact that we never really discussed on the merits what was going to happen, how are we going to deal with an application of a business that does not have tax returns attached. Now, why do we need tax returns? Well, first of all, uh, first of all, it's a required document. It has been on the application that requirement has been on every business application that's been filed, it's printed right there. Uh, so everyone knew about it and if they got their application in October when the court opened, they read that, they saw that. And they, I gather, had a choice to provide the tax returns or not. Uh, and one or more decided they would not do that. So, why, again, why are our tax returns important? Well, we, one, it's required, and the town council thought and voted to that effect that we want verification. That was their, their decision. I agree with that, but it doesn't matter whether I agree or disagree. That was their decision to require verification. This was discussed on the merits and more than one uh, meeting uh, and it ended up, the application ended up the way it is. Maybe more importantly, these business applications are hardship applications. You cannot, if you follow the criteria, you cannot get a grant unless your business is experiencing a current hardship or current financial adversity. How are you going to know if that's the case unless you have reliable backup. You could say, well, you know, it's, they self-declare. They say they have a hardship, you take your, their word for it. You could say they put down, you know, skeletal information. They put down on their application gross, uh, their gross revenues uh, over, over three years. You say they could self-declare and that should be good enough. But that was rejected by the council. That position of self-declaration was not what the council voted on. So what are we what are we to do about that? We have been and will be presented with more applications where no tax returns are there. How is one to judge uh, hardship? Um, 
without that, it is a tool, indispensable tool to doing that, at least for some, at least for some. So uh, um, that's the problem. And I will always believe if you identify a problem, try to come up with a remedy or two. So I want to throw this out and then we'll go around the table and everyone will react and we'll go around as many times as we need to to try to figure out what we're going to do. One, we could do absolutely nothing about it and proceed as if tax returns, no tax returns, doesn't matter. That's one thing we could do. We could, I would say, pretend we're dealing with hardship and looking into hardship and investigating hardship. And I think I'd say that's a pretext if you don't have tax returns to do that. So, but we could do that. We could just ignore that requirement and just take the applications as we find them, which last night I thought maybe it would work that way, but I don't think it's going to work. The other thing we could do is uh, pass some sort of a resolution, the exact wording is beyond the scope of this comment right now, and take some action that says we are deferring for the time being consideration of an application that is not accompanied by tax returns, we're deferring action until some other authority gives the applicant another chance to provide those tax returns within a limited window of time. And, well, why don't we do that? Well, we're at the bottom of the food chain, really, uh, to, to reopen the efforts of the consultant and so on and so forth. Um, I think it's much more effective, more authoritative if the law department does that, the administration does that, the council does that, someone else does that, and we could present those bodies with our vote. Action deferred, no tax return, do what you want. And along with that would be a memo saying, you know, maybe it's a good idea to go back to the consultant and have them work on these missing applications, give the applicants a short window. Heck, they've known about this since October. They've got the they've got tax returns somewhere in there. Or they go down to their accountant and they get them, or they go to their file and they pull them out. Um, so, you know, a short window, but a, maybe another bite of the apple. Maybe that the other bite of the apple is not a good idea, but I'm just throwing that out as, as a possibility. And that's a way we could handle it. So, if an application gets up to an agenda, it's a business claiming a hardship, no tax returns, it's an automatic under that proposal, proposal number two. It's an automatic action deferred. Memo the government, action deferred, you know, pending another effort to get those tax returns. There's probably a third option that will come to me as we go around the table. Um, uh, and we'll start uh, as you and we'll both come. The, the question, yeah. I guess, is did the council consider the appeal process? It was never discussed to my knowledge. That being that, to the applicants that have already come through. Um, and I think that it is a fairly, I mean, I, I was under the impression that these would be screened based on the criteria. They would be handed, not a question of quality, but complete packages. That is not the case. So wherever that communication broke down outside of our scope, it broke down. Going to that, then, if there are requirements for tax returns, uh, audited financials, reviewed financials, however you wanted to, to, to present those numbers, I can't see where we can consider an incomplete application uh, and, and handing over the town's money to somebody who can't keep their own house in order. If they prepared their own financials and can't afford um, a CPA to do the review, which is costly, to do an audit, which is you know ridiculous amounts of money depending on the size of the, of the business, I think then in a hardship situation we would consider uh, taking a look at prepared. I mean, I know we reviewed um, financials the other day. No site, uh, uh, no account assignment. Uh, they were PLs from QuickBooks, um, and we considered those. Uh, 
so, so that was good enough. But for me, without the prerequisite documentation or even the fault, if they forgot a page or two, they didn't, you know, they did a personal tax return, there's a one in there, or there's, you know, a, a corporate tax return without some of the necessary payments, I, I think we've got some leeway in that conversation to say it's incomplete, but it's there material. While I have you, what are your thoughts on a specific remedy, a specific action this committee should take? And let's, as we go around the table, hear your view of the problem, as Krista, but also give us some feedback as to what we should do now. That's part of the discussion. Can I get back to you on that now? Are we asking them to provide additional information? It's over. The, the, the effort is over. Uh, the window closed. Um, I think tomorrow night on businesses and it closed uh, last night on, or two nights ago or something on, on the nonprofits. Is it in our responsibility to ask the council to consider an appeals process due to incomplete applications? So let's let's talk about that for a minute. Um, a, that was never discussed, but an appeal process, I don't think this is what you meant, but allow me. An appeal process might be, I don't want to give my tax returns. Dear council, I am an applicant. I didn't provide them. I don't want to provide them. I'm not going to provide them. I want the council to vote to allow me not to provide them. I don't think that's what you meant. No, not at no all. I didn't think so. So that's why. I, that we reject an application due yeah. to insignificant documentation. Oh, I see. Sure. And in that case, can they, you know, can, is there a process? If we deny an application, number of different things. That's the gist. So let, let me respond in, in, in a sense. Um, we could uh, uh, deny automatically an application that is not accompanied by tax return, signal that to the council. And applicants one at a time can come up to the council and say, appropriate the money anyway. And that, and that would put the council in the position of opening up the file and doing what we do with or without tax returns. So that's a problematic, administratively tough to pull that off. Um, the other is give them more time, which is what I suggested. The council could give them time and instruct, because it would instruct the consultant to go after these tax returns within a certain limit of time, then it will come back to us if we get them. And if we don't get them, it's over. I, I, I mean, that's the, the uh, There has been communication from the consultants of certain applicants yeah. to say, yeah. that's the confusing part of this. I know. So, I mean, it, it, and given everything that we've come thus far, if it's an incomplete application, sorry, we can't consider it. We didn't approve it, we didn't deny it, we just, so I'm going to move around over the room, but let me try to capture your bottom line. As if I can. So, so, so I think what you're saying is we report back no action due to incomplete application, leave it on the council's desk, and they can do what they want. They can vote to give them more time, not to give them more time. Does that capture your? I would support that. Okay, but is that what you meant? Uh, in a roundabout way, yes. So when we go around the council, if you refine, refine it, okay. Mike Lynn. So I went to the law department today and requested a copy of the contract with the contract, the uh, consultant and the RFP. And it was their responsibility, direct quote on page eight of the RFP to prepare review documentation reports for completeness. So that's a role that the consultant should have been doing. It was at a council meeting, Craig was in December or January when this issue of what is the consultant doing before we see it? So we're now, no pun intended, ha handed a bag of dog shit and we're being told to make it roses out of it. So uh, personally, they're incomplete applications and the council should, when they get their first rounds of reports, someone on the council should pick up and go, why is 75% of the applications for businesses being denied? And then they can ask us, or Craig, you could report as a member there at the council, well, we're denied them because they're incomplete. Because the unfortunate thing is we've already told applicants, 
ship sailed. We denied your application. We can't now change the game. It's like, oh, we didn't really need it. Let's start all over. Um, so I think it's it's a bigger issue that's not for this table. Craig, unfortunately, it's on your plate because it was an executed agreement with the consultant. And I, I think it's out of our out of our lane. We're just stuck with what we have. So uh, as I have conversations with Chris sort of on the the same week. So what is your suggestion? What should we continue business as as we've been doing? And, and, look and the if there if an applicant comes in and they're missing vital parts of their application, they're missing tax returns. Well, then they're going to score below passing, so therefore it's going to be denied. It hasn't worked that way. It hasn't worked. I, I, I understand. I understand if it's vital to that, but but I mean that's but part of this, like I said, unfortunately that was a that was a responsibility of the consultant, and and if anyone wants a copy of this, I can email it to you. Well, what I'm, what I'm looking for, and I, I understand. I understand what you're looking for, but unfortunately, I think it's a goods and ser it's a service issue, that at least part of it. From the sense of the council, that, you know, we expect them to service, Craig, and therefore, Craig is not a bashful guy. He'll do whatever he wants to do. But what I want to get is the committee needs to do something. We, they, they. I'm saying nothing. Do. Continue. Nothing. Continue as we're operating right now. And if the the application fails on its merit, it fails. If they if they can if they write it's just like a grant. You write a good story, and you don't have everything there, but it's a good story on paper. You're going to pass. So if you don't, if it's an incomplete, like let's say. Some of the more incomplete ones that we were really struggled with. There was no documentation at all. Well, they were denied because there was no documentation. What so, what happens if we follow that? Applications come in front of us and they pass. They one did last night and they pass. And we now, therefore, have decided on the merits an application the way the story goes an application without tax return passes. Is that what your? If it passes, it's fine. If it doesn't pass, it doesn't. If they, if they, if yeah, it's like I said, it's all, it's, it's how they write it. If they put the effort into it, they, they wrote it, and it's incomplete. But yet we all can say it, it meets the criteria based on what they said. Well, it passes. Otherwise, it becomes a, 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 a an issue that's outside of this jurisdiction. Okay, Jesse. Oh, and actually, Rob. <laughs> Uh, 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 yeah, very quickly. I, I mean, I kind of, I'm a little resentful that we're put in this position. We have a very defined charter. Um, we need to stay within the constraints of that charter and our responsibilities. I think uh, I tend to agree with what Mike said. It's unfortunate um, for the application applicants. I think it was a responsibility of the consultants to perhaps advise the applicants when they submitted their application. If they were missing some documentation, I don't know if that took place or not. But I think it's a very, very slippery slope. Um, I think if you start to um, pass applications that are not completely vetted and complete uh, because of tax returns, what else can other people uh, who, have, who have submitted tax returns but perhaps are missing other documentation, can they start arguing that theirs should have been considered as well? Again, it's a very slippery slope. It's very black and white, in my opinion. If they're incomplete, we should not be even considering them. Um, and it's up to the council to decide what to do at that point and then redirect us if, if necessary. Rob, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can, Mike. So I, I wanna to try to capture your remedy for this. And is your remedy that if an application appears before us without tax returns, we proceed on the merits to assess, weigh, and score that application, even though there's no tax returns. Uh, no, if it's an, in, that I would, I would, I would suggest about that that was a an incomplete application. It doesn't fulfill the requirements to be voted on or discussed, and at that point, it should be turned back. Um, however, you know, listen, this is a um, we're human. I don't think it's beyond the scope of the committee to uh, acknowledge that there's some discrepancies and send some recommendations back to the town council to hopefully remedy and maybe revisit those ap incomplete applications in the future. But that's up to the town council. Uh, I, I think it's, it's important to be fair to everybody and all the applicants. And I think we had a very clear set of criteria and I think to be fair um, that they all need to be treated equally. I need, I need to come back and try to capture what I think, because I didn't hear everything you said, because it's by, by the mark. I think you said, therefore, we don't consider those applications. Correct. 
if they're incomplete based on what the council town the town council uh, chartered us to to uh, to um, to review then I think by just strict definition that they should not be considered okay and therefore by not considering them we report we report back no action was taken uh, okay I see what you're saying Michael yes we should not I don't think that based on if they're incomplete I don't think we should vote uh, uh, up or down whether to uh, we shouldn't deny the application we should simply send it back as an incomplete application so it's it would still technically be not be voted on and it would be up to the consultants and the town council on what to do with it at that point if they want to resubmit it to us change the rules and change our charter that's fine and we'll accommodate that but uh, i don't think we should vote on it i think we should just send it back to the consultants at that point as an incomplete application I need to get very specific and, and, and very pithy here. So your recommendation is an application comes to us without tax returns, we automatically take no action and report that up. Is that true? Correct. Correct. Okay. Are you well? Jesse, sir. I get a second. So <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm a little confused because last night, the only one that went through did provide tax returns. Lorenz Kempo did provide their tax returns, so I'm not sure what we're referring to. Are we referring to another one that we passed the night before that did not? Maybe I misremembered. I thought there was one that did that only had uh, book. That was bananas. Bananas. Yeah, bananas. That, right. I mean, I don't, I, you know, the thing of it is, is if we, look, they, they didn't give us our tax returns, but they gave us something in the place of tax returns. I guess it's, it's not a tax return, but I mean, they're supposed to be doing other stuff too. I mean, they're supposed to be providing specs on the work that's provided. They're not providing that. If, if we start denying applications on missing information, well, I could go through an application and say, you didn't describe this, you didn't describe this, you didn't describe this. Oh, but I got your tax return. Well, what the point, what, at that point, what difference does it make? I think if we start splitting hairs and determining, well, this is, a, this, is this, this is that, or we're gonna send it back, we're never gonna get done. I think everybody had the opportunity to prepare the information that was needed and submitted. We gave them deadlines, we gave them extensions, the consultant de dealt with them, gave them extensions again, tried to get the information from them. I say we move us forward. If the applications are missing information on merit alone, then they don't get passed and they get a, they get a failing score. I, I think the problem here is that, I, I think there's two separate issues. The consultant's not doing what they're supposed to do, and we're being given stuff to deal with with a tight time frame. And if we keep pushing it back, we're gonna be in 2026 and there's gonna be no money to be given out. I mean, I, I just think that if people didn't do what they were supposed to do, including provide coherent explanations as to what they wanted to do, as well as itemized amounts for what they wanna do with the money, then that gets reflected in the score and we push forward. I'm not opposed to sending them back as incomplete, but I don't think we should get them back either. I think we should be, those should be treated like we never saw them. I mean, and again, it, but what what does that constitute? You know, like does, okay, so we we approved one. What now? What do we do? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be that concerned about it. Uh, it's what we do going forward. And well, one application. What, what what's the best path forward? But one of my reasons for not scoring one high was because they were missing their twenty twenty one tax return. Yeah. So. But it, Exactly, we should have done. But it's baked in. There's no, there's no, there's no guarantee at all that an application without a tax return won't get passed. We say theoretically, well, we just won't pass them. Well, then decide that now, right now, with a vote. If they don't have a tax return, why wait until March or April when everyone's discussing and say, well, it's not that important and it passes? If you're serious about that principle, that they should fail, you know, because they don't have a tax tax return. We can do that tonight. We can accomplish that tonight. Right. With along the lines of what Chris is saying and what Rob was saying. Right. And what I what I think should be done too. We fail them tonight. It's not a denial. It's an escalation to the council to say, do I, what you want. I, I don't necessarily have a problem with that, but if yeah. we're using an example of one we've already passed and said you can have money, yeah. then I'm not a lawyer, but isn't that precedent? No. 
we've not established that you don't need something no, in order to get the money. It's precedented the decision by the United States Supreme Court. Oh, okay. On a very, no, this Sorry. is serious. Yeah, no, 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 no. All right. right. So it, it, uh, yes. Okay. We made a mistake once. We have to keep making mistakes. We don't. Well, no. yeah, no, I, 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 I yeah. I, I don't know what to do. I, okay. I, I think we're, I think we have like 200 of these things to read. And, you know, and, and if, if each one of them takes two hours, that's 400 hours of our lives, plus the meetings, plus everything else. Yeah. You know, I, I, I want some of the consultants money. You know? <laughs> Throw me a couple bucks. We'll come back to you. We've got two, at least two or three rounds in this. Amy? Yeah, unfortunately we're discussing this because it seems like the consultant hasn't been managed properly. Um, Slay one elephant at a time. 
auditors. So we have tax returns first, and then we'll go with the other. I don't think tax returns are, are as important as some other aspects of them. Um, I think you can't parse it out. But I will say that the Tuesday morning, I emailed the town clerk and I asked for the time. Um, I did get it, and upon review of it, I went over and I sat down with Jenna Small. And I expressed my sincere dis well, disdain, disappointment with the product that we're getting. Um, you know, I, I think it would be inappropriate. You know, if you send back and you say, we're just not doing anything on this application because it has no tax returns, possibly opens the door to circumventing the process that those that have followed did. How so? Well, um, it, it potentially gives the council the ability to say, we don't care, we are going to address it, we don't have to submit tax returns. I think ultimately it's our job to do the filter. Therefore, I would deny the application for non-completeness, I would why score, you, score it as a zero. Why don't you do that now? Why, why don't we just say that now? We could, one of the alternatives, any tax return, the, the fish bind plan is just express. An application comes to us without tax returns, automatic denial. We, we could take a vote and just like a passing score is over 69, it could be an automatic uh, uh, denial. I, 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 I will tell you that I am comfortable with that on a, on a few fronts. Okay. First of all, we shouldn't have to presume that the consultant reached out to some and, or didn't reach out to some. That's on the consultant. I guess we could reasonably presume that they did reach out and for whatever reason the applicant refused or was unable to abide by that. Um, you know, when I look at the YMCA application, I see there was a, um, a post-submittal correspondence from them to the consultant to Claire saying, you know, here's the stuff, you know, you, you're looking for. So obviously there was connection and, and, and there's a whole list of the tax returns. So they obviously did not attach any tax returns to the application as originally submitted. So we can't get into whether or not the consultant only contacted some non some nonprofits or, or or whatever. That's not. I don't think that's our job. I think it's our job to review a complete application, in fairness to everyone, and those that did not comply. I I think our recommendation should be to deny that application. That and then it's on the council, right? But to do. To review the application and to score it on its merits is unfair because it's a waste of time. Isn't your position the same as Amy's and Bob's and mine? So what's the difference between deny and no action? No action is we are it is stronger. Uh, denial is stronger than no action, right? We're saying, you know, what was given to us is not a complete package. We, in good faith, um, since we don't have a complete package, not our job, you know, it's either the consultant's fault or the applicant's fault, but we're just going into the zero. So, so you're, you're saying a not recommended on the merits merely because there is no tax return. Is that what you're saying? If you want to stay confined to tax returns for this, for this conversation. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and, and it isn't all tax returns. It's, you know, if they give us two, they don't give us one. It's the same thing. Same thing. So your, your the fish fine position is a little different than some of yours. Yours is a no recommendation, a recommendation not to appropriate with prejudice. I think that's it. That's our okay. That's, that's our decision. It's, it's it's not a second bite at the apple, which is you know giving an extra time. Okay. The well, council wants to do not that. arguing. I just want to be clear what yeah. you're saying. So to me, it's a credibility issue. You have an application, you have an ARPA application, yeah, the, at the government level, at the municipal level. If you do not have a tax return, which is a given, it's, it's, you, you, it's every application, it's, it's understood for them not to put the effort. To me, 
is is a fit. I'm not. There's. I'm, I'm not even going to to zero. I'm not arguing with you. I'm going to clear. Sure. Picture yourself deep into March. We've been meeting and meeting and meeting and meeting, and up comes an application with no tax returns. Is it your position just seeing that? Don't even start discussing. Just seeing that. Okay, you're close to three. Absolutely, you do. The weight, right. of, the weight of that requirement is enormous. It's, it's a credibility issue, it's a validation. And listen, it's, it's no, no different not, than PPP. I disagree with you. No, no, no. This, I'm yeah. simply suggesting you cannot tell me a business can't supply. This, these are, this is an important time. They're asking for municipal funds here at the rescue mall. You can't produce. The last two, three years tax return. I, I don't buy that. That is to me. Uh, and, 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 so, so I just right. need to clarify. <laughs> Sorry, one second. Yeah. Hold on, guys. There's no second bite of the apple. None. And if we voted your way tonight, mm -hmm. that would be it. That's correct. Right. That's over. That's correct. Right. Those. Okay. I, I, there is. Not there is. I just want to know if I get it. There is no confusion. Okay. Jack. Um, if the town council. Stated that tax returns had to be included in the application, then I believe the tax returns should be on application. And I think it's going to go with like our teacher doing a rubric. If you don't meet all the criteria for the rubric, you don't get a passing grade. Um, and I'm also fine with we're not going to take any action because that's what town council decides. So, uh, so, I, I just don't so I think I, there's two concepts, I yeah. think, and I just want to go in with David with concept A or concept B. This is not the wordsmith precisely, but it, it is one concept is <laughs> don't recommend giving a second bite of the apple. That's one concept. And the other concept is don't recommend they don't get a second bite of the apple. Does everyone understand the shortcut, verbal shortcuts that I'm using? Okay. Second chance, no chance. Yeah. Second chance, I'm not. <laughs> but first, can I just about the, about the procedural the second chance? Yeah. Yes. It's essentially out of our hands, right? right. So it's it's either you know. It, it's a denial. It's uh, you know. I mean, whether the council changes the rule is a denial. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So the concept is second chance or no second chance, and then we'll craft a motion accordingly. We'll take a vote and craft a motion. So just remember, it's not just tax returns. It's either tax returns or an accountant provided copy and loss statement. Uh, it was originally an audited uh, set of uh, financial statements from the organization. There was a lot of pushback uh, about that because of the costs and the burden to businesses to provide that. It got bumped down and it's just going to get reviewed, which is also burdensome. And then it got, you know, basically the, the statement was, let the accountant provide it. And in some cases, go ahead. I think the change was, if this is material, only dealing with nonprofits. But, but the business application requirements never changed. That was always tax returns. Or, or it was always that. I mean, it, it or says, or so let me just, yeah, 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 let me just read it. So, I mean, I'm agreeing with both of you. So, it says CPA issued profit and loss uh, statement. CPA issued profit and loss statement 2019, 2020, 2021, or tax returns for redacted personal information. Right. I agree with what you just said. So yeah. with the same thing, if we're crafting a motion that needs to consist of we would fold that in. in, in, in its either. Yeah. Now, if somebody wanted to do a mix of one year's tax returns and the last year's profit and loss, we could make something up. So that's that's yeah. that's a different going through the process. Um, for instance, the profit and loss that we did have the other day, um, you know, initialed by the accountant, if that CPA provided, mm -hmm. that's something. It's going to be a real thing. Well, <laughs> no, it, it, but, to, but to go through, there's a lot of different interpretations of Let's get to that. Of that. Let's get to that in a, in a 
second, but I, I want to I want to pull from you whether you're a second bite of the apple or not. Is there, is, but isn't there always a second chance for the applicants to petition the town council? Yeah, sure. Yeah. But I'm talking about our position. What, what do we do? Do we do we imply, suggest, or infer that the council can? Do we take no action on the merits, or do we take action on the merits and say denied because no tax returns? Council can do what it wants, but, want but it's what our position is that needs to be that I'm trying to get from you and everybody else. The original position is that. So I'm, I'm, I'm following the written criteria, and, and that does include. They left, they left that out. So before they had that tax return, if they didn't have a tax return, then we're not going to take any action on it. But now you're yes, saying yes, I'm, I'm, profit and loss. So. I'm walking that back to this. The original criteria, CPA issued profit and loss, which we're not seeing unusually, or tax returns with redacted, with redacted personal information. And that is what is required. Can mix and match, you know, if you don't have a tax return for one year, then you've got to have a CPA statement on the other. But the but the concept is if we don't get that CPA issued profit and loss, no tax return. But I feel like right. But I feel like if we just all agreed on no tax return, then we wouldn't have taken any action on it immediately to buy the application. So I feel like the whole sentence should have been that we're talking about, okay, if there's no tax return and there is a t an accountant providing profit and loss, then That's okay. go for it. That's okay. So, but we should be talking about that inclusively. We are. Not. We are. As of now, as of five minutes ago, that's why I brought it up. Because we've been out talking about tax returns. But they're functionally the same. There, there are applicants that do neither. Right. That they do neither. And that's what we're talking about. So, so back to my it's a flawed process to begin with from the scoring and every number of different things. As far as I am concerned, at this point in time, how many other months that this has been, been through this, we deny them no second chance. We're at denial on the merits. We vote not to recommend. Correct. Okay. Because of incomplete Correct. application. Correct. Okay. I think we take it up to the council. To do whatever they want. Exactly. I mean, but it's not that, that is denied and no such right. chance. Denied. We're done. We're doing it. We can't We're dictate. Done. Correct. We can't dictate. One is we take no action or we recommend not to approve. Correct. So taking no action because of no tax return is slightly different than taking action, which is not to recommend. What you do? I am taking uh, I'm the form of a capital letter. You're you're which? I say I'm the form of capital letter. Which is no action versus denial. Correct. Which is take no action. I think it is yeah, no. it's to deny no second. It's a it's a denial due to incomplete action. Mike Lee. Deny, no second chance. So denial due to incomplete application. Yep. Okay. Jesse. Oh, I'm gonna do Rob Fritz first. Rob, Rob it's you, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, no, it's okay. You know, I just, I think it, it should be a no action. No action. So absent the appropriate financial documentation, I I would say that the it's rejected. That okay. The, so the vote would, would be not recommended. Oh no, I would I, mean, I, I would I would score it a zero. Sorry. I would score I, I'm I'm on board with scoring it a zero. I fail it. Deny. Deny. Okay, so the vote would be at the end of the night, you're voting not to recommend this particular application because there's no 
capture for nascent fleet application. Correct. No second chance. I don't want to talk out of it. No, no, no. I, I'm, I, I'm. That was what I, I, I talk a lot. But at the very beginning, I was. I think that there's no second chance. Whether we That's score it and we fail it a fifty, or we score it a zero. Either way, I don't think it should go forward. It's almost semantics at this point, but it's sure. And I'll never use precedent in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Maybe. So here's my question that I was going to bring up the first line, and I still have the question. So I don't know how much follow-up UHY has done, and why, and if they've done it equally. There's no report with this saying no tax return. We asked them three times. Um, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. And I also read here, so. You know, CTA issued profit and loss statement or tax return. And it says in the affirmations and acknowledgments, the town may request, request additional information, financial or otherwise, in considering and approving any application. Now, this was written before we set up our procedures and we decided we weren't going to ask them. Maybe, I did not watch the webinar, maybe in the webinar, UHY said, you know, if you have your tax returns, that's good to put them in, but they'll ask for additional information if they need Maybe. It. We can't have rule no it idea. Out. Can't rule it out. No idea. Yeah, can't rule it out. So, and you know, maybe they followed up with people who answered the phone. Maybe you know, your small business people are busy. Nobody answers your phone anymore. You know, who knows? Um, so, with all that said, um, I am leaning towards not reviewing because they don't have tax returns and okay. sending it. Having other people deal with it because <laughs> okay. they didn't manage the funds. Okay, Bob Brooks. Um, I think there should be no action. Um, I don't remember the webinar, but I do know firsthand that they told applicants, even if it's incomplete, to get it in by the deadline. Because if you don't get it in, you get nothing. The deadline's the deadline. But if you do get it in by the deadline. There is a chance they will ask for when you when the review process comes, they will ask you for the information you need missing. And I can say that with all sincerity, I know that for a fact that that's what we've done. So your bottom line is second chance. So no action on our part, not to fail them, no action. Council decides what to do with it from there. Okay, great. So you know, I said to Janice the other day, if I knew that UHY was going to do such a bad job in their review. We would have set up a score sheet with two check boxes up top. The first check box would have been, is this a complete application? If you don't get a check in the box, you don't go to the reps. That's that's how this process should have been set up if we knew that UHY was not going to do this job. Um, I'm very concerned with the no action situation because then we're just saying, well, you know contact them, you know, get the stuff in August and then we'll consider it. I mean, that, that's sort of what we're implying. We, we've, we've left our determination on that particular application open. Our job is to review complete applications and I can't make those determinations in good faith. It's unfair to those that comply with the rules to treat those that didn't comply with the rules for whatever reason, it's either UHY's problem, it's the applicant's problem, it's not our problem. It shouldn't be our problem. Everyone agrees with you. I know. I, <laughs> well, it's, it's I just want to point that out. I know. It's just this, it's this issue of deferred action versus it'll shake up. We're going to make a whole action and it'll get rid of it and then it'll come to shake up. Uh, I, I, I want to read something before Carl. And Jack will get ready because I know and maybe copy this down. I'm trying to write it and trying to craft the motion that captures most most people's view. But I'm not often going to do that. And this is not a motion I'm making. I'm practicing. I'm rehearsing and running this by okay. Uh, so that uh, someone might say, I make a motion that if an application is not accompanied. By the required documentation, Jackie, parenthesis, tax returns or CTA, uh, whatever that said. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that application will not be recommended due to its being incomplete. Yeah. 
But what is not recommended? Yeah. It's the same, not it's recommended same as all the ones that we've been like. Less than 70, exact less than same. 75. We've been using that language. Exact same, yeah. So the mm -hmm. town council doesn't get to review it. Thank they can do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want. They can, they can, do they want. They can undo what we recommend. They can undo, yeah. yeah. What do we do in the meantime? Do we, do we, do we next week? Can we, yeah. 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 We're so we're not doing anything between that and you don't file. We can do ones that are filled out already. Can you get another agenda? Yeah, we can get another agenda. Sure. Uh, you know, and, and nothing. But I mean, isn't that really the right way for us to spent, take it off of our. I spent 20 years or 25 years watching the town council. We can all go. I, I, would prefer <laughs> I would prefer to do this and let them do what they want. I mean, I could send this up right away for their action and say, you know, hey, boys and girls, on February 1, the Parker Application Review Committee resolved the following. Very truly yours. Someone could put on the agenda, they could ignore it, they could take it for four months, I mean, they could do whatever they want to put. We know what we're doing. The, the other the other thing is by sending a list to the council of applications that are denied because of this situation, it expresses the gravity of the situation. Yeah. Right? When, when you merely say what do you want us to do with you know, oh. they have no idea how many applications have been accepted and uh, you know they have the ability to go back to their contract me and say, you know. Contact these people, or you know, or, or whatever. Uh, so, uh, so um, I'm going to try to. I'm going to make this motion now, and uh, Sherilyn, I'm not sure it matches exactly. That's so, recording as well. Yeah, I'm not sure it matches exactly, and, and I'm open to uh, material refinements. So I make a motion that if the committee receives an application that is not accompanied by either a CPA issued profit and loss statement for 2019, 2020, and 2021, Tax returns for those years with redacted personal information. That application will not be recommended due to the fact that it's incomplete. I got to carry it in somewhere with respect to business applications because that's all we've been talking about. So, why don't you make that the very first clause of it? Now, Sherilyn, use business application that is not accompanied by either a CPA issued you know, statement for 2019, 2021, or tax returns for those years with redacted personal information, that application will not be recommended due to the fact that it is incomplete. For discussion purposes, I will second your motion. However, it asks a, an amendment actually, and instead of being specific about the financial, can we just say the required supporting documentation? Because I think equally as important is, so you're buying the, the thing, the widget, whatever, and you have no document just to justify the cost. I, I want to I make a, a separate conversation and I got reasons for it. And we, we, I, I, I don't. I think that they're related and if that's how it goes, I, I can't support this. Okay. That's why I'm second it just for discussion purposes. Yeah, both of them if you need to. Well, can I, yeah. um, what is the harm in, you're going to get an opportunity to argue that that subset should be included in that what is wrong with a subsequent motion after that discussion, which includes that? 
I think it's just. Because that, I think you're okay with it. I'm okay with it. Just my 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 issue is I think it's just it's broad. You want to expand. I want to expand it to then. Yeah. This is not the only motion to be made. I I understand, but it, but I I prefer that it's just it's an incomplete. The required documentation was not provided, and then it gives us we still have the flexibility to say you know we didn't get the financials as noted in the application. We didn't get the backup material for whatever your request was. That's why I, I rather just do it in one motion. Procedurally, here's how I want to be handled. <laughs> um, if you so choose, um, we would entertain that as an addendum and combine the lack of documentation and so on. That would be seconded and your amendment would be voted. And that would greatly complicate and maybe sink the primary motion. And I don't want to risk that because your interest will or will not be protected on a subsequent vote. So your interest will be protected, but I don't want to throw this in the toilet because there may be a difference of opinion on what you're raising. Okay, I know I understand. I'm talk you out of it. Well, I'm still just I'm seconded it for discussion purposes. Okay. So, so um, for discussion purposes, I got you. Are we ready to vote? Keeping in mind, there's going to be another motion and we can raise that and I'll go to you first. <laughs> on this. So I so move. Is there a second on this? Justice I, yeah, second. I second it. Oh, okay. You said that. So yeah. um, we're going for a roll call now. And Rob, are you there? Ready to pull the trigger? And... I am. Uh, I'll, hit, I'll hit an aye. Yeah, let me find a okay. motion. Okay. I'm not going to do it. That's okay. I can read it in one of the cues and read by handwriting. Um, <laughs> the committee reviews a business application that is not accompanied by either a CPA issued PL statement for 2019, 20, or 21, or tax returns for those years. I will spell out those when I write it up. Um, with redacted personal information. That application will not be recommended due to the fact that it is incomplete. So we're considering it to be that. Yeah. Right. Carl Bonamico. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Mike Bodinski, yes. Craig Fishman. Yes. Rob Fritz. Yes. Mike Lynn. No. Rob Gross. No. Jennifer Mackin. No. Chris Reed. Yes. Jesse Reynolds. Yes. Amy Walsh. Yes. One, two, three, four. No. One, two, three. One, two, seven, three. Seven yes is three Four, notes. five, yep. six, seven. Did you get? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that carries. So On the agenda was the issue of lack of documentation for any other document you have to the uh, Substantiates the amount of the request. Mike, this is what you were talking about. Yes. Give me your pitch. So, I agree with you. But that's so I'm scared. I'm is sharing businesses. It's just, just for businesses. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, just, just, I'm sharing on the screen the why? what you but, but can we think about why just businesses? Because you could apply to the nonprofit. I'll tell you, can we keep it simple? Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, I, I don't disagree with you. I, I just we'll do businesses first. I think it should be set. I think that these two issues should be separate since they're separate applications between each other. And I like to focus on the businesses. The reason why I'm saying that it should all be together, we don't have subcategories on what was handed to the applicants. What was handed to the applicants and says, I have a screen share up right now. Please attach and submit the following completed application, copy of the Department Revenue Status Letter, well, a copy of Wallingford Business Trade Certificate. CPA issue profit loss statement, et cetera. We already talked about it. Documentation supporting funding requests. That's all just one thing. That's that's your application. That's why my why I voted no, and I and I I will not support separating it. It's it's just all one thing. And then if we were to take if we were to have an application that we deny for whatever reason, we could just in that motion to deny, you know, it failed to get the 70% or 70 points, right? We voted on it, so we said no. And why? It failed because of the following, it was missing the following items. We couldn't 
we couldn't justify granting the funds because of that. That was why I wanted it all together, because I think it's all important documents that should be required in everything and was asked of all the applicants on every single application. <laughs> okay, I understand. I want, I want 20 seconds and then, uh, and then we'll go to Ryan and then just you. If that was strictly applied, the Lyman Home Music Parents Association would have been denied tonight, fought to that tip of it. Or at least there'd be an argument that well, it should be denied automatically. Not really, because we're, yes, really. we're, we're talking about businesses. We're talking about businesses. Right. I, I brought that, that back. So the bananas would have been denied. And there are some applications where there could be an argument whether it's impractical or impossible or whatever to get that application. And qualitatively, the tax returns go to the core and sometimes estimates or appraisals or whatever might be a formality if you're in the ballpark. And I wouldn't want to automatically, rather than a case by case and applying some judgment, not even hear an application because of what some may say is a technicality. And I just Rob and then Jesse. Rob. We'll go on to Jesse and we'll, and we'll, we'll get back to Rob. It was, I'm just, I wanted to echo what you said because the, the hardship is established with the financial documents and that's the whole purpose for applying for the for the money in the first place. So if you can't demonstrate hardship or financials, then you shouldn't be applying. And so therefore, to Craig's point about having like, is there a, you know, the, well, first is a complete, okay, fine, it's complete. But the next one is, were you, was there a hardship due to COVID or whatever? If you can't see the money that sort of, the or the, the, you can't see the trail of money that says there's hardship, then that, that to me is a fatal flaw. If you itemize within the application, which you can, the amounts and the and and what it is, and people do their due diligence by going on Amazon and such and look it up, that's a bit more verifiable than missing the demonstration of hardship. So to me, I I don't see it as a I, I would I would score it lower if it didn't supply better documentation of what they want the money for, but I wouldn't necessarily throw it out. If that's my so I don't view them as the same. So, so far, the, the, the okay. choice is automatic bill recommendation and case by case. Is that your case by case? Yeah, because I, I, I just yes, I, I, say, I say it goes case by case because the strength of the application will supply the information needed about what they want the money for. But if you're, you could, you could provide an estimate of something, but if your application is terrible, then what does it matter? Amy? Um, I think that the language that the Specified documentation, document, it was, you know, please include the following documentation supporting funding requests. It didn't say, such as actual quotes from vendors. It did not give any guidance as far as what that documentation would look like. So I think people have given their best estimate by going on Amazon and writing a list of what, or, or wherever, and some have gone as far as to attach copies of quotes. Um, but I think our language specifying this is very vague. And it's a moving target. It'll come out in the contract when we, they go to submit their receipts and get reimbursed um, what the actual price was. So there is an opportunity to manage any discrepancies, unlike the fact that they can fix the core of the, of the business, as you said earlier. So I am for, I guess, a case by case basis. We have seen strong documentation that does not include printed price quotes, and we kind of know that that is the bottom of that. Um, and it goes to rating the application. Somebody says, eh, you know, $5,000 or whatever. Um, they don't pay. And I think, so I am going to go case by case. Um, well, yeah, I, I concur, and I don't know what the government guidelines are, and so then, and I, what Claire said early on in one of her times that she was talking was uh, the other guy that was if we're following federal guidelines, 
on some of these applications, if we do, sometimes when they buy a larger item, they need fall time. They need more than one quilt. They need three quilts. So I have to follow the federal guidelines on how this will happen. And so that'll work its way out also in the, in the mix. You're, I mean, small items. You're a case by case? Definitely always been a case by case. Okay. Great. On this particular issue, on case by case, because it really depends, you know, part of the application is, let's say, to employ someone, you know, we, we had an application about the homeless shelter, you know, what if it's an application that business says they're going to employ a, a homeless person? What documentation would be, you know, there would be in regard to that? I mean, I guess one could put something together, but are we going to knock out the application because there's not sufficient, I mean, that's just probably a good application without anything. So I, I think you have to do it on a case by case basis. Oh. I think we'd have to do it by case by case basis. Jackie? I agree, case by case. Case by case. It's case by case. <laughs> so let's take no action on we'll just yeah. move on. Now. Oh, actually. I, I don't know if you knew who I was because I tried to bring something up before and you wanted to stay focused on text and things. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Oh, Rob, do you have something to add? Nope, case by case. I agree with everyone else. We're good. Okay. Case by case. Case by case. We're all set. So, what about the similar issue of complete application? And what I bring up is if you look at the application for the Hungarian community club. Part of the application is affirmation as to the requirements. Um, I'm pulling it up now. And th there's a box, it's yes or no. It's, it's on the, uh, the last page, I believe, of the application. And Mr. Chairman. I sorry to interrupt you. If we're going to continue talking about that application, because I'm going to recuse myself on this, I, I really, I, I can't. So just make it a hypothetical. Yeah. 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 Okay. So thanks. You know, there's a section of the application that says, um, you know, it's affirmations and acknowledgments, and talks about that you're agreeing to do certain things and to operate in a certain way. It's just by checking yes, you affirm and acknowledge to have read and understand the above statements. And what happens when it's neither yes nor no? I mean, that's an incomplete application from my perspective. And, you know, I, I would think we would treat that like the tax return issue because one of the requirements is a complete application, so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, what happens when we run into that? I would suggest it's treated the same way, quite frankly, because, you know, once again, this is not that difficult. Um, I got lost in my head. Sorry. Well, we're going to come back. Okay. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> huh? I checked out. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Chris, I'll be reviewing the application on the, on the second go around. Mike. <clears throat> hey, Craig brings up a good point, actually. Yeah, minus the particular application that you were, were talking in a uh, what if scenario. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with Craig on this. Jesse. Oh, Rob, yeah, hold on. Thank you. <laughs> to the floor is yours, Rob. There you go. I'm sorry. No, that, that's fine. Thank you very much for reminding. Uh, I agree with Craig and you. That's fine. I support that. Um, it's me. No. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. Um, the only thing, the only thing that I would just wrinkle in would be that what if it was not, what if they, what if there was an issue with the version of what we got? Like some of the electric, the electronic versions of what we're getting look kind of scattershot and things are missing. If, if we look at the actual application itself, and it's not checked, yes. But if it if it's if it's an issue with, you know, like some of those PDFs are glitchy, like some things get kicked down on the next page. Let me know when you see them because that will be corrected. Uh, I'm alerting the consultant as I see them. Okay. But I you could be ahead of me in looking at the applications. 
So it doesn't fit all within the box and text appears to be cut off. And it then goes and down on the next page. Just just mm. let me know and we'll get that fixed. Yeah. And I'm gonna try to put things on the agenda to make sure that is not there. Okay, so that, that would be my, but yeah, no, I agree. If they oh. can't click the affirmation that they're willing to comply, then yeah, it's not gonna work. Okay, absolutely. It is unfortunate if, if it were to come down to that, but because one would think that UHY would use these applications and you know, you can circle back to some other thing, you know, there's a box here you need to check. But yeah, it's gone through many eyes to break it to us, so why yeah, question? Bob, go ahead. I think they should be able to just. Yeah, so I'm in a dissent, and I'm in a, uh, I think we're, with all due respect, in a group think mode here. I mean, I, I, I'd like to reach applications on the merits, and if something is sort of a picky detail, under no circumstance should that application be denied. Uh, and then we get in an argument which could be hours over whether this answer is really complete or whether this answer was responsive or merely because I didn't check this box that goes down the tube. What kind of, what kind of a message does that sound? reach it on the merits and uh yeah maybe something is less than perfect maybe we wouldn't phrase it the same way but can we get to the essence and, and assess the application even if that is not checked yes or no i mean is this something that is you know, subordinate and not worth and not worth a rejection or is this go right to the core like tax returns and hardship and so you know, have an application rejected because someone didn't check a box on page three, and we argue for an hour or two over whether this this answer is really complete or responsive or whatever. Why can't you handle that in a scope? If you don't like the application because someone didn't, you know, you know, check a box yes or no, it doesn't rise to that level of total disqualification. I don't think in this case it is mark it down if that's how you want to mark it, but but to throw it out and now we're scanning for technical, you know, uh, some may say picky picky, others say no, vitally important. I get, I get that, I get that. But what Craig described hypothetically to me was not vitally important. And to throw out an application on that, I, 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 I can't, I can't abide by that. I think that's what makes us special because we're able to, you know, really look at these applications as local. Us doing this, but I must tell you that yes. applications that are that go to the federal government for Social Security, for Medicare, for many of these uh, entitlements get immediately rejected. Defined benefits are immediately rejected if a small box is not checked that you feel doesn't seem, uh, you know, insignificant. And uh, we're better than the federal government. Well, it should not be us. No, I understand that. Well, should not be us. I'm not arguing one or the other. I just want to know how important it is to have a completeness in terms of application yeah. when you're dealing with the federal government. And at the end of the day, this came down from the government to on a loan at a municipal level, and and accuracy and credibility to a complete application for those who did it correctly should should be given that merit. And that's exactly the point. And what Mike would have is actually to nullify the direction of the council because they didn't ask for an application. They expressly said they concluded application. So that, that, that's bullet number one. So let's, let's so go start with start with it. Oh, so sorry. I, I get to, you're, I you're, think I get to, this is your first bite of the apple. This is my second bite of the apple because oh, okay. everybody else has already gone. Okay. Except for Jack, you can decide to rest. You can have a first bite of the apple. Swing it. So that's your second bite. I'm, I'm starting. You know, that was the first part of my second bite, which I mean, <laughs> so the first of us. Well, it's a nibble. Can I interrupt this point? Sure. The second bite comes in five sections. <laughs> so this is the first third of the first section. Take a big first bite. <laughs> so I, I think that portion, you know, I'm not talking about the other subjective aspects of the application, which in some places could be blank. This is an important part where it's part of, you know, it's acknowledgement. In my opinion, it's just as important as the signature. So would you have an unsigned application be considered just because it's an application? No, I, I, at least I would. So I do. That's so um, procedurally, I'm going to interrupt the presentation. How does one, are you frustrated with the I wanted to ask a question, but I'll, I'll 
I'll put 30 years. I'll put 30 years. I'll be a cake. Now we're on a cake. Mr. Bond, you know, if in a case something is rejected for social security abuse and it, it, it gets put back and you get a chance to check the box and resend it. Yes. Yeah, let's say yes. 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 Um, pretty quickly. Not, well, I don't know about pretty quickly, but um, it gets initially denied and then you have and you and you have to resubmit it. And, and some of these some of these divided benefit plans are, are, are known as pensions, Medicare, um, disability get immediately rejected. I read uh, tax returns get immediately rejected if they're not completed correctly, but they have deadlines. And, yeah, I'm just wondering, like, you know, when you don't fill out an online form and it doesn't click through, you know, you say, oh, I But, but to, to Craig's point and statement, it does say completed application. So, I'm going to weigh in, but you're going to be after me, and I'm going to go around because people are interested in them. So, imagine yourself presented with an application, someone presents, and they say, go through it. Craig says, I have three areas of incompletion, A, B, and C. And someone says, no, nah, that's de minimis. And so, we're going to have a vote on A. We're going to have a vote on B, and we're going to have a vote on C as to whether A disqualifies, B disqualifies, and C disqualifies. If any one of those carry, that application is then not recommended. But if every time an application comes up, we are now scouring it for incompletions, and every incompletion cited is going to be a vote and a debate. Just the working how this is going to unfold procedurally. And it's, and it's too bad because you just want that they've done their job correctly. Those, those are the cards we dealt with. Understood. Those understood. are the cards we dealt with. Isn't that one? If they're a very reputable consulting firm, that you should have gotten completed that application. Jack, your thoughts? I think that it is subjective. And I guess if people find yeah, I think we vote on it, but the minor things, I mean, some of these are small businesses that maybe don't even get the out application and they did the best they can, and I don't think it should be just my on the tax contract. I don't think it's subjective and based upon all the other information that's provided in the application. So your bottom line is if someone finds an omission, or an incomplete, it should be both rejected. We weigh it. We weigh it. We weigh it. We weigh it. Correct. Okay. And just, just to be clear, I'm not talking about any omission. So I, I just want to be specific affirmation. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know why. Yeah, be. Be. Well, there, there could be others, but you know, I, that's the only one that I'm concerned about because every single application has to have an answer, it's either a yes or no. You get two choices. Every single application to be completed, you gotta answer one of those two questions. It's, it's just like signing it. Every single application. It'll come back to you anyway. This motion yeah. just passes, it's coming back to you. Yeah, I just didn't want it. It's my turn to talk about signature. Signature's a very much of it. It's a sign. I don't think there's any question that it was good. Yeah. It's just not denied. Signature, there were ways to take care of this. When you do online forms that make it mandatory, or the mandatory forms that you submit, it wasn't correct. Now, we also have handwritten forms. So, so where do you take that into account? Let me just, I, I, uh, a lot of real estate activity through my lifetime has gone through. There are times where my application for a mortgage has not necessarily been complete, but I'm ready always before that they say, hey, on this application, you need to go fill out X, Y, and Z. Would it not be reasonable to expect that the contract put forth by the law department would ask them as part of the application briefing to make sure that X, Y, and Z, that this is done? Sure. Presume that you may sure. is there your Hold on. Uh, Yeah, I agree. Question is, these are the cards we dealt with. How do we remedy it? That's we're frustrated because of we're put in a position that we shouldn't be in. 
got it. We all agree with that. But now, how do we go forward? Well, that's, that's I, I think we spend the time to identify what are the mandatories. If there are three mandatories that we can agree to, that the, these affirmations needed to be made, then if they're not met, they're not filled out, then the application gets denied. If they're, I mean, it, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. But I mean, there are, like Jack said, there are, you know, there are very subjective parts of the of us post and everything else, all of those things, we can weigh those in our scores. But in, in, in this case, when it is, you know, a specific affirmation and a yes or no question that is not answered um, you know, for, you know, the two or three or even four elements that we're going to get to here, we need to narrow this down again. So my suggestion is start drafting a motion. Not, you know, with one around the table. But someone has to put a motion together. And I don't think we'll turn around up to it. That's a good question. <laughs> so in theory, and obviously my score was 100% for Lyman Hall, but in theory, Lyman Hall shouldn't have gotten there because it was wrong and to be on, you know, on whatever that, the names yeah. of Confort. The names yeah. weren't the right names on Confort, so therefore, no, it's a fraud. Can I ask one please? Sure. Can I be taxed on one application? It's not right. No, 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 no one church. Asked on. Technically, it should have been failed. Church of Nazareth. Church. Doesn't it? I'm just according to this theory. Yes, I'm just giving you no, that. Not, 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 not according to this theory. All I'm looking at is the affirmation. No, but I'm saying, but can I, so it's a wrong application. Can, I, can I speak to Rick okay. without bringing up the specifics? Does that have to be answered tonight or can I work with you, Craig? Underscore the serve the, the pieces and it won't have the name because I mean I value Craig's opinion on this as a sure. lawyer. Let me just, and to, and to, yeah, what we can do is not decide it tonight. Our next meeting is on the 16th. We'll do it before the next meeting. So then we would have to call in, uh, you know another meeting before the 16th in time to implement what the suggestion is. So, you know, Why? Well, supposing we meet on the 16th, we get no action tonight, and there's an application which falls into this category of imperfection. Then we were nonprofits on the 16th, and could we be nonprofits on the 16th? Yeah, we could. Take it after that. Yeah, we could. We could there as a business. Sure. Yeah, we could. Yeah. You guys are let's let's so finish up. I would hope this is the only application. We're going to circle back to that. So, yeah. two, two things I would point out. One, some of these applications. They did the online form. Others are scanned documents. Mm -hmm. So that may cause kind of a little issue, especially if you're using a lighter pen or whatever and may not get, I'm being devil's advocate. I don't not uh, disagree with you, uh, Craig. The other is, and not to get specifics, but what about uh, those applicants that may have language? English is not their first language and they may not have fully understand what they were signing off on. And or any other reason why? So we have to make some sort of accommodation in the, in that sense. Because I mean, technically, you know, if we we start pulling out some some of the state and federal regs on that, it, you know, they could come back and say, "Listen, you know, sorry, I need assistance with this. Could you further explain? Make a reasonable accommodation to say, explain me a little more. You know, you said I was denied because of this fatal issue. I don't." understand it. I need, I need my translator. I need an assistance from someone else to, to explain it to me. That's, that's the only thing I just also think about. I'm, I'm not that's getting a, specifics. That's a complication. Yeah. I, I mean, but it's an issue that was brought up. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm just saying it's a, it's a, it's a wrinkle that. Right? Yeah. Because if I you need to come back to something that with what you said. Um, the committee shouldn't authorize or ask you and anybody else to get together because that raises freedom of information issues, agendas, forums, 
However, there's no rule against calling up somebody and saying, what do you think, and putting your head together. But if it's committee authorized or directed, I'm worried about that. No, it, there's an issue. There's only that. an FOI issue if it's a quorum of the... Of, of, no, hold on, hold on. I inter I'm going to interrupt you respectfully. Yeah. It's only an issue if it's a quorum of the group yeah. or it is a subcommittee that is formed by the group. Then yeah. it's an FOI. Head head if they, if these two want to connect offline and then report back, that's totally that's fine. That's what I wanted to make it clear that there's no authority, no direction, do what you want to do, just don't get a quorum and vote on it. Right. Yeah. 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 Don't invite because anyone you're else. Not authorizing, directing, instructing, you're not a subcommittee. And the other, sure. the, so, the, the other, it, 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 no, 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 no reply to all because then technically that is a meeting under FOI. Once you hit reply all, and then furthermore, it's a it's an item that should be a business of a regular meeting. We violated FOI. Leave us out of it. Leave us out of it. We'll keep keep it just two people. Come Less than four. Okay, can I just jump over Rob for a sec? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um. So. Again, without specifics, realizing, but with respect to the example that was provided, this entity provided the wrong application in the first place. It's in there, it's in the backup, and in it, they did affirm all of the things and it was submitted electronically. When they were told it was the wrong one, they filled it out and then it was scanned in. The one that was filled out and scanned in is missing the checkbox. However, they had already done it, and, but they had submitted the wrong application. So in, again, it is not technically complete because they didn't check the box. However, they had already done one and they filled out the wrong one and were told to do a different one. And so when they did, they missed the box. So in this case, this specific case, I don't think it was intentional, nor did they knowingly do it. I think they were told you did it the wrong way and they did it quick and gave it back. And the group that told them they did it wrong in the first place should have checked it to make sure that it was accurate before it was brought in because that's so anyway so that's my nancy drew moment yeah. <laughs> you're all welcome let, let, let me ask a question in cases like this where it seems like a clerical error is it possible to approve contingent on checking the box i think so we can put a contingency in our motion I think so. Yeah. If it's Yeah, it seems like a clerical error. If it's one ministerial. Yeah. 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 Missing your tax returns was a big, big yeah, thing. Yeah. One little, which the form should have been paid at first, but you couldn't do it without. I, I appreciate the concept. I got it. In she this case, it. they. The, elect, the, the, print, the, the scan. The print version is the issue. Check, but the electronic one they did first is complete. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. No, I, I agree. I shouldn't be yeah, I, I need to. Oh, I'm, yeah. it's, uh, it's a lot of concepts. <laughs> the majority. I'm not agreeing. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm agreeing that it should. We Since go you better. like my contingent idea? See, yeah, I like your contingent right. idea. But, or, or something, or continue on, not failing. Just continue, let them fill it in. Um, I'm just concerned procedurally. I mean, look, I mean, it's UHY once again. Um, it's their fault. So, I mean, our job should not be that difficult. So, I mean, I it doesn't really matter to me. I just, you know, we've already decided that it is not a complete or It's not a complete package if it doesn't have certain financial information that is required by the council. And now we have the action of somebody going back to the applicant and saying, uh, you know, it's contingent upon you correcting this aspect of the application, which, uh, you know. Yeah, there's that's a mystery of complications. I didn't know we got to think about how that can be implemented. Yeah, I mean, is it fair to, I mean. I like to think it's possible. You know, so we handle the signature the same way. You know, we're going to approve contingent on signing the application. And then we're, I mean, I'm not, I'm just saying. So here's what I suggest it's 904. Um, let's uh, think about adjourning. Um, 
I will load up the next agenda with nonprofit programming applications because we do not have criteria for nonprofit hardship applications. I'm anticipating that's going to be approved at the council meeting in two weeks. So therefore, I want to get out an agenda for the 16th. And um, because this is a loose end for maybe all applications, but until there's a resolution or something of, of this, we'll just pr proceed. Um, so, that, so the 16th expect nonprofit programming. The council we've got the same problem, but we'll just we'll just proceed. We're not going to delay. The the council is not going to be taking this up next week. I don't know what's on the agenda. The council meets the fourth week. Oh, yeah. They don't meet next week. No. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so we're just going to we're just going to proceed. I think um, I'll put out an agenda as soon as I can. I think the defects you're pointing at apply both categories, nonprofits and businesses. So we won't have a policy in place by the 16th then. Um, unless you contact me, you know, later or something or something has worked out. But I, I wouldn't uh, if, if there's anything else that we want the council to look at, we should discuss that now so you can tell so you could make a vote so you can bring it to the council because they're not eating for two weeks. <laughs> what do you I'll let them know if there was anything else that the group wanted because we are going to bring up the okay. That's so all I'm by the way, I mean they got to decide the nonprofit the hardship criteria for nonprofits. They got to decide that. Um, we took care of the tax returns. We didn't take care of the other detail, but um, that needs to be addressed ASAP. Is it a one? I mean, I don't know that everyone can answer the question. Is it a one time problem? Is that the case? Then from my cursory review, it appears to be the one you had brought up lying with difficulty. I looked at the application, mm -hmm. I thought that may impact or they did correctly mm -hmm. fill out the application. So, okay, are we ready to go? Yes, sir. I move, I move to adjourn. Second. Anyone opposed or abstaining? We adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.